So today we're gonna to get started installing some of our insulation. Um, we're gonna cover doing the floor, the walls, hopefully the ceiling, and we're also gonna be later covering the different types of insulations that you're gonna to wanna to use for different types of environments. So, but first, before we can get started on that, we need to empty out everything out of this container. Okay, so we're getting started cutting our insulation board and what we want to do is just take a quick second to show you uh, the type of insulation that we're using right now is that closed cell. It's a really dense uh, foam board insulation and all you would need to, to cut this to prepare to install it is going to be a box cutter or a utility knife that you can switch the blades out. Have a couple extra blades but it cuts really smooth like butter. Uh, level and a pencil or a marker. Marker would actually be ideal, but I somehow have lost like 20 markers on this doing this so far. So uh, pencil for me it is. You just take your knife and you'll get so good that you can split the pencil line going down this board, going this quickly too. I'm literally cutting the pencil in half. And once we get down to the end here, all we do is just snap it off just like a piece of drywall real quickly. Run, oop, run your blade down that seam there. Make sure not to have your fingers in the way. And that's all the scrap we're gonna have to insulate our floor. So you wanna pull that measurement across the end of the floor and make sure that you get it pretty tight in there, but give yourself a little bit of play. And if you undercut it, we'll show you something that you can do to fix that because this board is really expensive. You don't wanna waste anything. So whatever way you can lay out your container to maximize the amount of square footage you get out of each sheet of insulation, that's gonna be a vital part of efficiency and keeping your, your cost low. Okay, so when we're putting this insulation board in, one thing we wanna note is normally you wouldn't wanna have this, this wall insulated. We'd be doing the floor first and then moving on to our walls. But in our case, we wanted to show you a couple of different phases throughout this build that we can kind of show you, here's part A, part B, part C, part D. So keep in mind, this would usually be a blank slate. So this sheet would lay down real easily. But in our case, we went ahead and put a little gap using chunks of the foam so that this sheet will essentially slide right underneath it and down into place nice and tight here. We're just gonna use great stuff. They have door and window, which does not expand as intensely. So it's meant to seal completely, but not push and bend because that might actually lift up this panel. So when you spray this in, you then put your next panel in it. But if you were using the other great stuff, a spray foam insulation, it might actually expand and push that panel up and cause the, the next layer of panels to buckle a little bit. So as you can see, we got some of that insulation board installed and we're gonna start putting our plywood in. And uh, when doing so, normally you'd actually want to put it the other direction so that you can minimize scrap again, just like we did on that insulation board. Um, in our case, we're kind of doing our build a little bit differently because we want to be able to show you like raw insulated, plywooded framed so throughout this whole container. So don't follow what you see here, follow the directions that we're kind of giving you on how to do each step. So when you do stagger, um, when you do put the plywood the other direction, as you put your insulation board and you're butting the seams up this direction, you wanna go ahead and make sure you don't put a seam on top of another seam. So if you can, start the first sheet of plywood, you know, cut it to 92 or whatever yours is, and stagger the seam. So try and put it halfway across the, the full sheet that you have down there. And then when screwing it down, just make sure to try and follow some of your chalk lines where you've snapped, where you have stuff that you don't wanna try and hit. Um, so in this case, we marked out our steel joists that are in the way there, so we don't have to use self-tapping screws. We're just gonna screw directly to the plywood subfloor. A lot quicker, a lot easier. So we're about to start screwing this plywood subfloor down, and we're screwing through that insulation into that plywood subfloor of the container. And when doing so, you wanna make sure that you use the proper fastener. In this case, you want to use a really heavy duty screw, preferably exterior screws, not using just simple coarse thread drywall screws. Yeah. 
wanted to go ahead and show you what the wallboard insulation would look like. Once we've got a couple of these panels down here on the floor, we actually just made ourselves a little plywood runway so we could walk across this. But when we put this board in, there's that little bit of gap in between that you can kind of see down here. So that's where we went ahead and we used our spray foam gun that we go and take this and just fill up these cavities a little bit. Then you can see it's one to expand out. So I wouldn't want to actually do this unless I was putting the, the board in right away. I went ahead and left this for you so you could see, but I'll have to take my knife and it's still a little soft, so I'll cut it out later. But what I did was once I spray foamed it real quickly, I grabbed that sheet and I kind of slid it in so none of this stuff squeezed out underneath. So I slid it into it that pushed that spray foam up into the cavity and it makes sure it's sealed really well between these two boards. So this thing will be completely insulated all the way around. I gotta move my foothold. Oh, let's do that again. Ah, now I can't reach it. I lost my hammer. Yo, welcome to Containing Luxury, episode three. Woohoo! Let's get started. <laughs>